Hey, 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 Superior Shea fans and other humans, how are you doing today? Uh, it is 15 October 2021. Well, we have a nice day outside. I've been meaning to uh, shape this block of wood you see here so that it could be used as a reference for my stropping. And uh, I suppose you can't ever go outside in Florida without hearing some lawn work somewhere, can you? Oh well. I don't feel like busting out the microphone, so let's just get to work here. Uh, I am going to shape this block of wood, and I it is balsa wood. It is very light and uh, easy to malleate. You see I took a pencil and put a pencil mark all over here. This is some old 150 grit sandpaper that's still got some tread on the tires. Hopefully that'll make short work of this in just a couple minutes. This is my concave lapping plate for producing a convex hone. So if your hone was concave, your edge would be convex. And if your hone was convex, your edge would be concave. The way that you can make a hone convex is to lap your hone on something that's concave, which is what this is. So as you could see here, you could see quite a curve there, and a less dramatic curve this way. This is a ellipse with two axes at 90 degrees. The long axis is about 7 meters and the axis this way is about uh, 2 meters. And it doesn't get narrower this way, it's the same axis all the way across, sort of like uh, those German blimps that crashed or whatever. So this is wet dry sandpaper and this will work just fine dry. Now this is 12 inches long, which is longer than the lapping plate. In a perfect world, uh, I would be using an 11 inch thing and going like this, but I'm gonna go like this. And um, what'll happen is this'll end up being not quite as curved as the inverse of this. So anytime you lap on something that's larger than your lapper, the incumbent shape of your la of that which is being lapped will, will be retained just a little bit. Well, I can already tell I want that 60 grit paper, so let me get quit being cheap and I'm going to go spend on a paper and uh, get my little brush out here. I don't want to be here all damn day doing this. In order to get the shape correct, I need to keep this axis well aligned to the length. You can't be like this. That's called yaw. So you can go like this and you can go like this, just none of that. Well, it's already taken shape, look at that. Perhaps I should have done this first, but I'm curious to see how much thicker it is in the middle than it is on the ends. So we're at 50.4 in the middle. It's 49.7 down there. That's 50.7, that's one millimeter of rise. It's gonna end up with a lot more than that. 49.7, 49.7. Oh, it's actually pretty consistent, isn't it? And we got 50.8 as the peak. I'm going to suppose that uh, this was the same thickness, give or take its nominal variance as a piece of balsa wood across its entire span. So let me go look on the triangle calculator site and figure out what the arc uh, of a three and a half meter radius thing going this way would be uh, at the center. How much rise should, be, should I be shooting for? And that way I kind of know like when I've basically got it to succumb to this shape. It should also be slightly thicker in the middle than it is on the ends, which actually I could already see that it is. The width of the arc is the length of this plate in this case, which would be 12 inches. So we're gonna put in 12 inches. And then the height of the arc, we're gonna put millimeters and that's, what, that's what's gonna be what's reduced from the, um, from the wood. And the radius of the arc, let's say it was uh, seven meters going the long way, so we'll put 3.5 meters. The height of the arc is 3.3 millimeters. Ooh, that's a lot, isn't it? So I should see three millimeters of um, difference in the thickness from one side to the, one side to the center. 
I'm sorry, going across the three inches will make the arc three, and then it's about one meter of radius, and we calculate 0.7 of a millimeter. It should be about three millimeters lower here than in the center, and about 0.7 millimeters from here to here. Now we're nowhere near that three millimeters on, this, on the long side. I suppose having that one inch of hangover is uh, really not good. Maybe I should uh, saw it off. But the only bad part will be that I'll be making a backer for my strop that is flatter than that which I just honed with, uh, which some would tell you helps because you're providing a guarantee of apex to the edge. However, I believe that the best thing to do with the razor, if this is the bevel, this little triangle of space here, the bevel, you want to touch it like right just behind the apex because if you if you get the leather to hit right there that tip will curve and go like this and go around with each with each drop and it makes the the, the tip it's very fragile but it's more comfortable anyway let's just do like three or four more of these and then we'll see where we're at over here at the corner i got 48 and change and 50.5 so we're about we're about two millimeters reduced from the edge to the center You know, this is such a thick piece of balsa wood. The other side, I could eventually chop this down to nine inches, and then I could uh, shape it, shape it facing, facing this way, and then I could have a really bendable uh, strop, bend, edge bendable strop. So I would need about three millimeters of gap between edge to edge. I, I might have two, but I don't have three. You know what, I'm just going to accept this work for now, because clearly we do have a curve. Whoopsie, whoopsie, it's like a little seesaw there. And I'm sure even across the dead center, it's going to meet the minimum standard. Oh yeah, no problem. The left to right curve is nice and represented. The long curve is the hard one. I suppose that's not a surprise, because I need to cut three inches off the length of this, so that it's uh, shorter than the uh, 11 inch plate that I've got here. I think because I have that overhang, and I don't have overhang left right on this plate. I'm getting the convexity of the plate completely going across the three inch width of this block of wood, but not across its 12 inch length. And being an person, I will take a home saw, and then what I'll do is I'll use one side facing this way, and the other side facing that way, which means I'll have a 9 inch block of wood. Well, you can very clearly see the curve, can't you? Nice and thick right there. I can feel it. It actually peaks about there. So it's a little dead off the center. It feels like it's a little thicker there than here. Yeah, right about there it feels the thickest. And then I, yeah, right about here. Not bad. Let's go use it for its intended purpose, right? So what I'm going to do for this shave, which is uh, three days fallow, I mailed the wrong razor to the to a person. To the, so I mailed the correct razor, and I mailed a return box, and they returned it. Thank you very much. And I will not sell this razor, so I will adopt it as my own. And it is a 6 8 Thiers Assard Avid Sonat Extra with the plain black handle. I have not used my concave edge making stuff on a modern 6 8 Avid Thiers Asar for my own beard. So it'll be exciting to have this for myself. I'm just going to wipe off the anti-rust oil and then give it a stropping on my new little contraption and away we go. I'm going to take a brand new Herald strop. This is the Prima Rindlater. So these are uh, split side strops, which means um, the side you're stropping on used to be to the inside of the calf. And this is the cut that's closer to their, to their muscle. And then the other cut is the one that says J, which is the Russian leather. That's the thicker, spongier one. But I actually prefer this one because this part, it's a little bit flatter. And um, for me, I get a better shave off of that one, even though I can tell that the feedback is preferred to most people to the J. It's the same leather as this one, which I've been using with my yoga wheel in various shapes. It's just I want a three inch piece to match to my little three inch block of wood. And for the shave, I'm going to use my very high mileage Simpsons Classic. Uh, this is the Classic One. I have a one and a two. And I'm going to use this high alkaline Brute pre-shave 
soap, and then I'm going to put a little tiny bit of the Paraso Pre-Shave Cream on. And I'm going to use some tallow soap, which you don't see me do very much. This is a little sample of a Bay Rums uh, type tallow soap from an American artisan. Well, isn't that some delicious feedback? Generally, tallow-based soaps, they like you to leave a lot of water in the brush. So I didn't give it a particularly good shake just now. Nice, strong, fragrance oil base to mask that eucalyptus and menthol of the Parasso pre-shave cream, which I can still feel burning underneath. So if you're a super fan, you may remember my uh, tipsy video of opening a Thiers Assard opening two Fears Assard 5 8 Extra Hollows, picking the worst of them and shaving with that without touching the edge. This one was mailed as a sale from someone who requested it to be further honed. So this would be the first time I'm, I'm shaving with something just like I would sell to the customer for a Fears Assard razor. So far it feels good and nothing special. I can't say I love tallow soap, but yeah, it is great at going backwards because 
I don't wish to detract from the edge that I'm selling you, but all of my experimental razors have done extensive time, if this is the bevel shape, thinning the rear of the bevel, the, 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 the top of the bevel near the spine, by using very small diameter hones. They've all been really made skinny for about a year now, because I don't care about the marks that it leaves behind. But I would never do that. Honestly, even if a customer asked me to do it on a brand new razor, uh, it's, it would be hard for me to go that way, because it does leave marks. I suppose, given my very poor beard preparation techniques, I have become reliant the past nine months or so on the thinning of the bevel, developing my current standard for what a shave should feel like in this bathroom, in this office, I should say. And so this, there was a funny little mark back here. It was from Thiers Assard, not from me. Other than that, I used Vaseline on the razor, and I only used it on my black Arkansas stone. And uh, it has nary a mark from me that I could see. But all my razors over there, using water on cauticles to do the rear side bevel thinning, or just a water stone, which you can't use with Vaseline, they've all got plenty of marks, and I don't give a shit. This isn't bad, but I've had better. Anyway, let's get cleaned up. I suppose it does have that extra gear. Yeah, you can, I can, I can feel how close that shave is. This is the Prince Charming Balm. Hey, everybody wants some. Hey, it's coming, okay? Mrs. Arkuffel wrote me back, and uh, yes, we're in the, we're in the production phase. I am sure we will have this balm, 100% sure, by early November at the latest. So gird your loins. Getting uh, five dozen pieces, and they'll be about 40 bucks each. But I've been working that thing for well over a year. And I still got a couple months worth left, so it really isn't that expensive for how wonderfully long it lasts. And man, does it make your face feel soft. I like to use the Prince Charming Balm and add a little bit of this tonic, which is alcohol-based, just to take off that extra fat. So that is the cute and mundane tonic. And we'll have more of that one too. We sell probably 10 of that thing for one of this. Very few of you have tried the facial tonic. But everybody comes back for the Prince Charming. I even had my neighbor, who I gave, I gave a tin, and he asked about it. Like that, you know, he's a, a shaving minimalist, so for him to bring that up, that's pretty crazy. Editing is hell, folks. I've been at it for uh, an hour and ten minutes almost, and I'm not even halfway through. Man, I don't know how people do this all day for a living. Tough way to make a living. Anyway, came out great, right? See you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.